Hello everyone, welcome to the introduction video of the BOMP lab assignment, which is the first assignment of the computer organization course. This video will demonstrate how to use GDB and various tools to diffuse a simplified version of the BOMP you have been given. The BOMP is basically an executable that requires you to enter the correct input in each phase, otherwise it will explode, i.e. you will lose points. To figure out the correct input, you must reverse engineer this executable. If you execute the bomb normally and you don't know the correct answers, it will explode. So don't do this. You should run the program with GDB, GNU debugger. If you run GDB bomb, it will start the debugger and load the bomb executable, but it won't run the program. Instead, it gives you a command line interface similar to Python's REPL. To run the program, you can type run and press enter, or you can simply type the first letter only as a short shorthand. This applies to many commonly used commands in GDB. Now, even though we run the program through GDB here, it behaves normally since we didn't put any breakpoints. It's now asking for an input, and if you don't know the correct answer, the bomb will explode. To circumvent this, we need to use a breakpoint to stop the execution before the bomb explodes. But before that, we need to disassemble the program to figure out where we should put the breakpoint because we don't have access to the source code. Fortunately, GDB has a built-in function for disassembling. Simply type this command followed by the name of the function you want to disassemble. We can start by disassembling the main function as you can see here, the main function calls various other functions to print strings, take input, and execute the phases. To get started, let's put a breakpoint at the main function. You can use break main command or you can shortly use b main. And now when we run the program, it will stop at the beginning. You can see the list of breakpoints by typing info b at any time. GDB also has a graphical interface that disassembles the code interactively. You can access that by running TUI enable. By default it will show the source code here, but we don't have the source code. So you can switch the assembly by running layout ASM and you can also view the registers by running layout regs. Now we can run the program and step through the instructions in the program by using the step i command. Or you can use the shortened version si. If you enter a function, you can ex exit that function using finish command. And alternatively, you can use the next i command to jump over function calls while stepping. Again, you can use the shortened version ni. Finally, you can use the refresh command if the UI doesn't look right to you. The step and next commands will not work as you might expect here because we don't have access to the source code. You should use step i and next i versions of these commands. Another alternative for disassembling is a program called obj-dump. When used with minus "-d option", this program will disassemble any given executable and print the output. Of course, you can easily redirect the output to a file for convenience. This approach disassembles the whole executable and allows you to see the bigger picture. For example, here we can search for the main function. And once again, we see that it uses fgets to read input and pass that input to uh, phases. In the assignment, you don't need to worry about reverse engineering the main driver function because its source code will be given to you. You will be responsible for disassembling the functions in each phase, such as phase zero here.
When you disassemble any of the phases, you will see that it calls explode bomb function at various points. For example, in here and in phase 1, in here. Therefore, in order to ensure that you never lose points, you can put a breakpoint at this function. Now, when you run the program, even if you make a mistake at some point, this breakpoint will stop you. And when that happens, you can safely kill the program before the explosion. Afterwards, you can execute the run command to start over. Let's defuse phase 0 of the simplified bomb. Obviously, we need to start by putting a breakpoint at phase 0 function, and as a precaution, I will also put a breakpoint at explode bomb function. Now we can enable our graphical user interface, switch to assembly layout, and run the program. As you can see, it first asks for an input because this happens before phase 0 function call. And to make debugging easier, you should give an easily distinguishable string here. For example, let's say my input string. Now we have entered phase 0 function. It will move the stack pointer first and then it will prepare for a function call. In x64 architecture, the first argument is passed in the RDI register and you can examine the value of a register using the print command. Also, you can specify the data type using forward slash. For example, forward slash d says that it contains an integer value. But uh, these are strings, which are basically character pointers. So we need to con uh, look at the value contained in that address. For that purpose, you can use the x command. And again, you need to specify the data type. Now, when we look at the data at the address RDI as an integer, it will print this. But when we print that as a string using forward slash s, it will print the input string we have given. Now, this instruction, the current instruction, will load a value to RSI, which happens to be the second argument register. And then it will call the strings not equal function. So this instruction is uh, called load effective address and it basically takes the value in a register, adds a constant value to it and it stores the result in the second register. This RIP is the instruction pointer register and this instruction basically adds a constant offset to that instruction and loads that to RSI which means that we can basically treat the this value as a constant. Now let's step over this and take a look at the value contained in that register. As you can see here, the address of that register points to a string called test and the next function will compare these strings. So I will skip over that and the return value will be uh, stored in EAX register. We can take a look at that register and as you can see the value is 1 which means that it's true and these strings are not equal. When we execute the program it will eventually jump here and call explode bomb function because we can say that this phase 0 function wants the input string to be equal to this test a string. So let's start the program over again and this time we give the correct input and we can type refresh to fix the UI and now when we step over these instructions we can see that the return value of strings not equal function is zero which means that the strings are actually equal and it won't take this branch and instead it will continue and eventually return to the main function. This means that we have successfully solved phase zero.
Now let's move on to phase one. We will start by descending this function. And as you can see here, it uses a scanner function. And this presumably means that it expects an integer value unlike phase zero. So as usual, we put our breakpoints and then switch to graphical user interface. Now we can run the program. We know the answer for two phase zero and for phase one, I will give an integer as an input. Again, you need to make sure that you can distinguish the value you give here. Now we have entered phase one and as before, it creates space for the stack and then it will prepare the registers for the scanf function call. I will skip over this and now we can inspect the values of the registers. The first register is RDI and we need to print that as a string. As you can see here, that's the input string we have provided and the second argument is RSI and as we have guessed, it expects an integer value because that's an integer formatting string. Now the third argument is passed in RDX register and as you can see here, it loads an address relative to the RSP uh, stack pointer. So this means that it's a local variable. Now our scanner function will be called and then it will check the return value. It will expect one because it expects to see one integer value and then it will make a comparison against EAX register. The second value is the local variable that has been used in the scanf function call. So that should be the integer version of our input string. So we need to take a look at this EAX register. And as you can see here, it contains 760. Now, when we jump over that, it will observe that these values are not equal and then it will eventually explode the bomb. So we need to input 760 in this example. So let's try that test 760. And now when we step through the program, it will reach this comparison. And since these values are equal, it will not jump to explode bomb section. Instead, it will safely return to the main function. Now we have successfully completed phase one. Finally, let's solve phase two. And this time I will use the object dump output. As you can see here, the first section of this function is exactly the same as phase one. It reads an integer and stores it in 0xc local variable and afterwards it takes this uh, local variable moves it to edi which is the 32-bit version of rdi and then calls function one and finally it compares the return value of function one to 0x7, 0x78 you can use python to easily and quickly determine what these values mean for example you can simply type 0x78 and it works out to be 120 in decimal notation so essentially this time we need to give an input such that the integer value of that input when passed into function 1 will return 120 so let's turn our attention to function 1 and as you can see here it first moves 1 to EAX which is the return register and compares the input to 0x1 which is basically 1 and if it's greater than that it jumps here and if it's smaller than or equal to 1 it will simply return this means that it will return 1 whenever the input i let's say i is the input whenever i is smaller than or equal to 1 it will simply return 1
and in the other case it will move the input to EBX and then subtract one from the input and store that in EDI. This is basically the same thing as RDI as I said previously. So here EBX is I and EDI is I minus one. So here EBX is one and EDI is I minus one. And then it will call the same function again. So this is a recursive function and the result will be given in EAX register. Finally, as you can see here, it multiplies the value of EBX and EAX. EBX was the original input and EAX is the return value from the recursive function call. And this value will be stored in EAX register. So this basically means that we return i times function one, i minus one. And finally, we pop the original value of RBX because we push the original value of RBX into the stack here. And finally, we return the value we have computed here. So this essentially means that uh, this function one calculates the factorial of the value. To summarize, this means that we need to give an input such that the factorial of that input turns out to be 120. So let's say our input is i, i factorial should be equal to 120. And the value that satisfies this equation is 5. So the solution for the last phase should be 5. Now let's run the bomb and see if it works. The solution to phase 0 was test, the solution to phase 1 was 760 and in the last section we have found that the solution to phase 2 is 5 and as you can see here we have completely finished solving our bomb. Thanks for watching.